So this is my original worm bin. I've split it into a different bin now, and this is my neglect bin. I've literally left it outside. You can see just paper towels there. This I didn't even bother to shred. I just wanted to kind of shade the worms a little bit. You can see if they have some sort of squash growing in there from one of the feedings. Um, but what you can see underneath all that is tons of worm castings. This bin has actually, you know, thrived with neglect. Look at the size of these worms and they're everywhere. So I just move something aside there and you can see all the small worms retreating. And again, we're talking like I didn't even shred any of this. These are just full pieces of cardboard. And then in there, you can really, really, really see a ton of worms in there. These are our smaller worms, but they're breeding super, super well. So this is my neglect bin. But what I, what I mean by that is I don't like regularly feed it. I don't make much effort. Oh, look at all the roots on there from uh, the squash or whatever that is. So the worms are, you know, finding home there. Um, so what I mean by neglect, I don't do anything special to this bin. I leave it outside. I'll have to eventually bring it in as we approach winter. But all summer, all I've done is leave it outside. If I feel like I haven't fed in a while, I might throw something in there. But again, I don't really worry about how much. I'm not worried about overfeeding whatsoever with this bin. Because when worms have adverse environments, they do breed more. But there is diminishing returns to that. You can't absolutely, you know, flood your worms. You can't absolutely overfeed them. And with this method, you'll see, look at how gross that is at the bottom. There are downfalls to this. Um, so right when I dug that up, I did just, you know, the ammonia smell came up a little bit. So despite it being a great worm breeding bin, in terms of keeping this in my house, which is in here right now, just because I don't want to be a weirdo and talk in front of my neighbor, um, you know, it, it's not, not good for the house. Like I'm going to have to redo this bin completely before winter. Uh, the system that is operating right now, another huge worm there, um, isn't working uh, for indoor setups. So I'm going to split this bin into two new ones in the very near future and that'll also help the worm population just you know grow more so it's worked for what i wanted to do my worm video my worm bin from the other videos it, it was fat it was you know i split it from this bin so this bin is working completely fine and it goes to show you you don't need to follow all the rules with uh worm bins if you go on like a blog or anything you'll see everyone say you have to shred it up you have to do this you have to do that that's not always true Sometimes there needs to be an asterisk besides statements like that. You should shred paper up to have increased worm production. And you should, you know, have holes drilled in the bottom to avoid um, the water pooling up and creating a smell. But if it's outside and you don't mind the, the flies and fruit flies and whatnot, it actually doesn't really matter that much. And if you're not concerned about how long it takes for your worms to process things, again, same idea. It doesn't matter too much. Like these animals, like worms are literally decomposers. They're meant to be in conditions like that. Try to focus here. Like, look, that this handful of worms, like it's loaded in there. So many worms in one little handful. And the castings, like they're not beautiful because they're not dried out, but I could hypothetically let things start to dry out and sift these castings out and they'd be perfectly fine. So again, just tons of worms in there. Look at all those. So this bin, neglect has been the answer for this. And like you guys see, like literally just full pieces of cardboard, squash growing, full pieces of paper. Like this is the definition of neglect and these worms are thriving. This is a mixture of European night crawlers and African night crawlers. And they've just been outside in the summer here in Canada. Just today it was 30 degrees Celsius and they're fine. I don't shade them. I don't do anything special. I give them enough room to burrow down when they need to. Um, and yeah, it works for me. Uh, night times have been getting down to about, you know, five, six degrees Celsius. Um, so not warm by any means. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about these guys. I don't need have to rush too much to bring them in. So one more look there. Look, there's worms in all that grossness, like just tons.